Uh, CPR administered to him for more than nine minutes right there on the field. Just a stunning spectacle as the two teams kneeled, uh, praying, hoping for the best. Some players, Josh Allen, the star quarterback, just openly weeping on the field, knowing that this was something different than they'd seen before ever. And the only thing I can compare it to, Joe, is Hank Gathers back in 1990. You'll remember that. Yeah college wow. basketball star who suffered cardiac arrest on the court and collapsed there. Big star uh, in, in college basketball at the time, 32 years ago. But nothing like this that I can remember. We're going to talk to Peter King in a second here on a football field. Okay, well, let, let's bring him in, NBC Sports columnist Peter King. Peter, looking at the hit, um, you know, when I, when I first saw the news break last night, um, I thought, oh, it's going to be another one of these horrific uh, shots that, that, that we see every one, a Daryl Stingley uh, type shot. Um, the hit was the kind of hit that we see 100 times every weekend in the NFL. So there was nothing uh, particularly uh, different about that tackle uh, that he made. What, what, can, you, what can you tell us uh, about uh, the cause, uh, the, what, what people are speculating as to the cause, doctors? Well, Joe, a lot of people last night and into the early morning hours today are basically uh, understand exactly what happened. When someone's heart stops, you need to, it needs to be addressed immediately by medical professionals. At every NFL game on the sidelines, there are a total of about 25 medical professionals, both emergency medical professionals and you know orthopedic specialists and others but there is a score of people at every game who understand when a heart stops exactly what they have to do and that last night meant that uh that demar hamlin got exceedingly good help and he got it very very quickly now, I think what everyone kind of wonders now, okay, is this guy going to be all right? And I think there is reason for optimism this morning. And that reason for optimism is because his heart started again on the field, according to medical personnel who were there. He was put into an ambulance and taken to a level one trauma center, the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, so there probably uh, was absolutely as uh, the, the medical attention he received was about as good as a person could get in that situation. And I think DeMar Hamlin clearly, what it appears as though happened, you're absolutely right. A hundred times a weekend, I might say 500 times a weekend, there is a play almost exactly like that. A guy makes a hard tackle on a six foot four, 220 pound receiver, T. Higgins, and it is normal as anything you ever see in the NFL. Right. And he apparently hit him at the exact perfect location that caused this event to happen. So, you know, luckily for him, he's in a level one trauma center and he's getting the best care possible. And, and look, I'm not going to speculate because I have no idea. I don't think any of us really have any idea. But there is uh, optimism this morning, whereas last night at 9 o'clock, 9.30, when you saw the players crying on the field, and when you basically saw the two coaches get together, and look, I've not talked to either Zach Taylor of the Bengals or Sean McDermott of the Buffalo Bills, but it was very clear that after a certain point that uh, they probably were not going, not only were they not going to play, I don't think the Buffalo Bills players, in fact, or the Cincinnati Bengals players would have taken the field regardless of uh, what they were asked to do. I should just say one thing. There's no indication other than, uh, you know, speculation that the NFL originally ordered uh, this game to go on after a five-minute period. There was discussion right. on the field about that, but I, I don't. Th I, I, my information as of last night and this morning, uh, I do not have that understanding. And, and according to reports that I've read, uh, there was there was talk 
uh, on ESPN that they the players would be given a five minute uh, break and then they'd go back. Uh, the NFL came back later and said we have absolutely no idea where that information came from. Uh, no, spe because we certainly uh, never said anything uh, to that point at all. Um, I'm, I'm going to pass it to Willie who has a question for you. Uh, but Willie, just to put this into perspective, this is for us, um, unfortunately. Well, I, I, I have two friends whose heart stopped, who had cardiac arrest. One was with a personal trainer at the time. They had a defibrillator, got his heart started again, uh, and he was fine. I mean, I, I saw him this summer, and uh, he said if, if, if medical uh, personnel wasn't there when he had the cardiac arrest and put the defib he'd be dead. And, and sadly, uh, tragically, our good friend Fred Hyatt at the Washington Post mm. was visiting his family, walking in the streets of Brooklyn. He had a cardiac mm. arrest, and there, 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 there wasn't anybody around for quite some time to take care of him, and it made all the difference between life and death. In this case, as, uh, you know, as Peter said, the NFL has people on the sidelines. Uh, they started treating him immediately. We can only hope. Uh, and pray for the best here because they had great medical help right there waiting for him. Yeah, no question about it. And it, it should be said that even an elite athlete, and if you're playing in the NFL, by definition, you are an elite athlete, can have a pre-existing condition that he or she doesn't know about beforehand and now will learn about only after a cardiac event like this. We're happy to hear a little bit of optimism in Peter King's voice today. We'll look to hear more from the hospital coming up a bit later. Peter, I was struck, too, just by the two teams gathering together. The two team owners were together in the Bills Hospital. There were images late last night of Zach Taylor, the Bengals head coach, pulling up to the hospital in his own car to go in and check in himself. This was clearly a moment where football was rendered completely meaningless last night. You know, Willie, you said this, that this, by many accounts, was the game of the year in the NFL. It was a game uh, between two teams with a total of seven losses. And here we are in week 17. Both teams on long winning streaks. Two of the franchise quarterbacks in the NFL getting ready to play each other for the first time ever. And so there was great, great anticipation for this game. Uh, the TV rating on this game would have been out of, the, out of this world. And I only say that because what you saw last night is what I would call sort of the brotherhood yeah. of what happens in the NFL between teammates, but between players on other teams. You see it all the time. If there is an injury on the field during the game where a player has to be taken off, uh, let's say on a cart, you will see the majority of the players on the other team come over and touch his shoulder pads or, or basically do something to indicate I'm with you, brother, because every player who plays this game understands. As Bruce Smith, uh, the Hall of Fame defensive end of the Bills once told me, he said, I am in 60 car crashes every Sunday. And you have to do that willingly, Willie. You, you, you can't be afraid to do that. And so this 200 pound safety always, very often, will take on guys who are bigger than him because that is this game. And I just think it's it's important to realize not only the physical demands of this game, but in some ways, you know, when you look at this sport, you see so many injuries happen. And I do think the one thing that is unique about this injury last night is that it brought players on both teams to tears and it caused both coaches to say look we know our team and and look we don't we don't know precisely what they have said uh but it's clear that both of these coaches were very much in favor of this game not continuing and so the i think the one other point that really should be made willie is that in football you know, i've covered football for 39 years and in football, I have seen practices where a guy will go down with a significant injury, maybe a, a knee injury, a shoulder injury, he's laying on the field, and the coach will simply 
move the practice 20 or 25 yards away. And he will continue it because these players have been conditioned to understand that the show goes on. And last night, the show, thankfully, did not go on. Yeah, Booger McFarlane, the former NFL player who's an ESPN analyst, made the point you just made there, Peter, on the air last night where he said, we all understand injuries come with this game. We all know that things can happen on the field. But the line is you get to go home to your family after the game. And that's why this was so jarring. So let's really hope and pray. Continue to do that for the very best for DeMar Hamlin. Nobody's thinking about football, Peter. But as you said, this was a huge game. Have they even begun to think about or talking about rescheduling this game? Is it a no contest? What do they do with this? You know, it's going to be very difficult, Willie, because uh, clearly the Bills are in no position to play this game. Their airplane with most of the players and team staff on board returned to Buffalo early this morning. Uh, several players stayed in Buffalo to be with their fallen teammate. Uh, so I, I don't know what's going to happen. The mm -hmm. difficulty right now in thinking about playing this game is that this coming weekend is the final weekend of the regular season. And then the week after that, the playoffs begin. Right. So this game had huge ramifications for the playoffs in the AFC. Uh, but I don't think many people are thinking about that right now. Yeah, absolutely. NBC's Peter King, so great to have you on. Bring us some perspective and reporting this morning. We appreciate it. Good to see you, Peter. Thank you.